Okay, today, let's continue on with the notes. Now, if you have not turned in homework, uh, we do have homework due today. That was a page 594. That was the one I gave you a couple days ago. Um, make sure that one's getting turned in. It's got to be due right now because I said it to, at the beginning of class. So if you have not turned that in. Uh, this assignment is going to go on the fourth quarter. Just so, um, I, I like to at least do that. So if you need to make fixes, you're not happy with it, you can do that. I'm gonna hand, I'm gonna try to hand it back to you tomorrow anyway, but I wanna at least give you time to clean, because I don't wanna like be that one person who ruins your grade, because you couldn't make a fix on that. So um, I'll put that on the next quarter. So I know some people turn in um, late work and um, redo assignments this morning. Those will be in the grade book. I'll hand those back tomorrow as well. I had a ton that were turned in this morning, so uh, those will be entered. All right, um, but today, we, I want to review what we've been talking about the last couple days here. We've been talking about the sum and difference formula for sine and cosine. I believe we have to finish one of those things. We have to finish, I think, the, is it the sum formula for sine. I don't think we've done that one yet. Okay, so um, let's do that. So sum formula when you're adding angles together. This is one that I think we did not cover yesterday. We didn't have time. We kind of ran out, and I just kind of stopped early just so you could have some time to work. Um, this formula, I'm just going to... Just write it down right off the bat for you so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's this. It's going to be sine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, and then this, this addition sign, the plus sign, will be the same symbol in the formula, which is different. Like when you did cosine, the formula changes. But for sine, it keeps... Oh, geez, fun to go. The sine formula will keep the, keep the plus sign and it'll just put it right in the middle of the formula, and then we'll do cosine of the first, sine of the second. Okay, is there any questions for how we did that? Okay, and again, that was the, almost the identical formula we had yesterday for the difference. The, um, the only change there was it had a minus, uh, it had a subtraction symbol versus a, you know, an addition symbol. Okay, now, let's do an example of this, because I don't like to just give you the formula, let's actually practice it. Okay, um, so we can actually see this. We're get up by computer watching All right, but no, you can you can actually put this in your head. So uh, this, I'm going to do one example of it where we actually come up with a number. Uh, I'm, I'm going to actually pick the number that we did yesterday. We did, I think we did 75 yesterday or something like that. Well, let's stick with that number just so because we're on that same page of how that works. Okay, so we're going to try to break 75 up into two numbers that add to make 75 numbers that add to make add to make 75. Uh, we, I think we did it for cosine and we did subtraction, but we didn't do addition. So, say it again? 30 and 45. 30 and 45. Those would be the numbers I would think of, right? Um, now, to plug these numbers into the sine formula, this is going to be your theta, this is the beta. And we're just going to plug them into their individual spots. Now, how do we know what numbers to pick? You can't just pick random ones, like 10, 65. It has to be from that unit circle. I'll put that unit circle up on the board here in a second so we can actually discuss that. But they have to be the numbers from that, that property sheet. You can't just make a random digits to add. Um, so there's only select few numbers on that property sheet that we can use. Um, so these are the numbers that go in the formula. So uh, the formula right now, this is sine of 30, cosine of the second number, plus sine, because we're, we're adding these, so it's going to be the plus sine, cosine of the first, sine of the second. So those are my two numbers. I plug them in the right, uh, the right spots so we can actually discuss that. Now, we're going to rattle off the answers for these. For these actual functions. Now, this is the part that I want to bring up the unit circle. So you can see it. Where are my numbers coming from? Like, how do I know what the sine of 30 is? Other than just using the, the special triangles. How do I know where these are on the property sheet? So I'm going to pop that up right now. Okay, so here's your unit circle chart that I provided. Right. It's on the website. It's basically, every day I've always had it on the website, so if you need to re-download it or something. But as you can see, we have the angles, right? It's a big, you know, it's a Cartesian coordinate plane. We have zero degrees, 30, 40, 60, or sorry, 45, 60, 90, 120, 35, 50, and keeps going, right? And the best part is it even has the radian measures, so you know how to convert those really, really quick. But the answers, if you're going to go like, let's say, 30 degrees, because that's our first angle, 
the parentheses that's by the coordinate here, these are the answers for cosine and sine. Those are the answers. So when I say, okay, find the sine of 30, well, that's the second number. Sine is always, it's alphabetical order. Cosine comes first, sine comes second. So the answer that we're going to use is half. When I start saying, hey, find the cosine of 45, well, then you're looking at 45 and cosine is the first number. So that's root 2 over 2. So do, do you see how to like read those numbers off from the unit circle? And again, when we're trying to think about what are numbers that add and subtract, these are the numbers you can pick from that you can either add or subtract. But obviously, on this part, we're adding. So. Okay, so sine of 30 on your unit circle. If you find 30 degrees, sine will be the second answer. It's half. Uh, cosine of 40 over 2 over 2. Root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2. Root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2. All right, you guys are pretty quick at that. All right, and now the last step, I want to multiply those straight across because you can multiply fractions. So that's going to be root 2 over 4. Now we're here, we multiply those, that's root 6 over 4. And now you can add the two fractions. They have the same denominator. Exactly. Um, when, you, when you multiply fractions, you actually multiply the, the numerator and denominator. You multiply across. But when you add, you just add the numerator like what, what I heard there. So root 2, root 2 plus root 6, all over 4. That is the exact answer for the sine of 75. Now we did, I think we did subtraction yesterday. Right? We did an example of that. We did the sum and difference formula for cosine. Does that somewhat make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, um, all fine and dandy. Um, there is one particular problem I do want to talk about. Um, it's in the book. You're going to see it once we get the homework on this. And it's and it's just a rare problem. And, it, and I think it was funny the way that you actually solved it. Um, this is a problem that I saw. It was sine. 25 cosine 5 plus cosine 25 sine 5. That's, that's how the problem starts. That's the example. And I thought it was just kind of a funny problem because do you agree that it looks like this? Yeah. Right? It's already in the formula, right? It's already here. The problem is the numbers they have there are not perfect numbers. They're not on the unit circle. So the, the, the weird part about how you solve that problem is you actually take that problem and you go back to this thing. You go back to what it should have originally started at. So this is an addition formula for sine. How oh, we know that? The, the, the sine and cosine switch. Like they're, they're alternating. So that's, I know it's a sine formula because that's how sine works. They alternate. Then it's, a, it's an addition formula and I'm using these two angles. Yeah. And so now that I know that, this is actually just the sine of 30. So it came down to a nice easy number. We already have that. That's on your unit circle. The sine of 30, you find 30 times the second number is half. Like that's the answer. So like you didn't actually have to solve this one. You actually can go back to the original problem, and that actually made that problem easier. Um, so that so you got to be kind of comfortable going this direction versus backwards, just depending on like what they started you with and what the numbers are. Okay, does, does that make sense though? Like when I showed you there? Yeah, that's okay. Question. Hmm? Uh, when we got 25, five, yeah. did you take that sine and cosine or the sine and sine? If you're understanding what I'm saying. Sine and sine. Like sine 25 and sine 5? Yeah. Oh, like in here? Yes. No, because you can't distribute sum. You wouldn't do that. So you're just going to add this and then that's. No, but like, I don't know. I'm not. Right. I'll just wait for another example. Okay. Oh. All right. So. Okay. I'm intrigued by the question. I'm not quite sure I'm following there. I like your shirt. Hmm? I like your shirt. Thank you. All right. Um, let's do tangent now. We we haven't talked about tangent yet. I want to go through that. Um, I'm gonna we're gonna develop it. So I'm gonna have you just kind of watch for a couple minutes. We'll talk about how it's developed, and then we'll do like kind of an example of it. Um, so we're gonna let's do the tangent addition formula first because I already have that written up there. So we're gonna do tangent addition. Or don't erase that. I'm gonna copy it in my notes. And that right? Yeah. Yeah, we did that. Kind of side to side. It's side to side. Or erase it's not side to side. All right. All right. Um, so uh, we're gonna do the tangent addition formula. So this is this is kind of new. We haven't seen one of these before. Um, I'm gonna, basically, what I want you to do right now is just kind of watch. Just kind of, um, just kind of watch how this is going to work. I'm going to develop it, and then I'll tell you what I want you to write down. So, 
how they developed this formula is they basically they basically replace tangent with what it's equal to. So if you're looking at your property sheet, so flip it over, go to the, the other side. What is the most common thing that tangent's equal to? Negative tangent or cosine. Sine over cosine. Oh, that's what it's equal to. I agree that it's equal to <laughs> 1 over cotangent. And then the, what was the other thing? There's like negatives and all that. There's the other ones. But I think the most common one that most people should know is that tangent is the same as sine over cosine. That's, that's what it's equal to. That's, that's a trig identity you could substitute in. Well, when you do that, when you replace tangent with sine and cosine, you actually have to use the same angle that they use. So what was the angle that we had? Theta plus beta. Yeah, theta plus beta. So we have to plug that in here. You have to use the same variables that they use. Okay, so this is the start of how they developed the formula, right? They replaced tangent with this, and now they, they go one step further and they write these down as their respective formulas. These are the sum formulas for sine, sum formula for cosine, and that's going to go top of the fraction, this is going to go bottom of the fraction. So I'm going to do that, so again, just keep watching. Uh, so the sum formula is the one we just learned, the sum formula for sine. So the sine of the first, uh, cosine of the second, plus, because this, the sine has to stay the same, and then cos of the first, yeah, cosine of the first, Sign of the second. All right, we good with the top. Okay, so that's the that's the addition formula for sine. The addition formula for cosine, very very different, right? That was one I think we learned it Tuesday this week. The addition formula for cosine is this: it's cosine of the first, cosine of the second, minus sine. Because cosine formulas, when you're doing the sum, is actually the opposite operation, and then it's sine of the first, sine of the second. So that's the setup. Now this is where it gets a little messy, but there is a purpose for what I'm going to do here. How they developed to get to this formula is they divided everything by cosine theta, cosine beta. They divided everything by that. Now I know that seems a little goofy. Like, why would you ever choose to do that? Um, you'll see it. It'll, everything will start simplifying, and it will make a lot of sense why they chose to do that. Okay, and the reason why I can do that is because it's actually multiplying the top and bottom of the fraction by the number one. Because if I were to pull those out, it would be one over cosine theta, cosine beta, and that would be the same as bottom one over cosine theta, cosine beta, because that would be distributed through. And those would simplify to be one. So I'm actually multiplying the fraction, the original blue fraction, by the number one. Okay, so now, when they did this, what happens to the cosine beta, cosine beta? Yeah, those cancel, right? And what I'm left with up in this top left corner is this thing. What is sine theta over cosine theta? Tangent. So that's how they develop the formula. That this turned out to be tangent theta in that top left corner. Yeah, and so now these cosines cancel, and what are we left over here? Tangent of beta. Okay, so that's the top left corner. Bottom left. Those cancel out, and I'm left with a one. Everything cancels into one. Subtraction symbol. Here. Nothing cancels, but these are both tangents. Right? They're separately both tangents. So I have tangent theta times tangent beta. If they're the same, if they're the same variable, yeah, it would be tangent squared, but they're actually two different variables. So you have to write either. So make sense? What you're looking at up here, this. This is the addition formula for tangent. That's the part I would like you to write down some more. So I'd like to write that. why I left this stuff on the board like this. Stuff. Usually I get rid of it right away. Is that this formula for doing tangent is a little tricky. Um, and what I mean by that is that when you actually have to use like the tangent addition formula, um, if you try to use your property sheet, the problem is with the unit circle side, this side in particular, when you're trying to find the angles, none of these will give you the answers for tangent. 
Agree? Like they give you the answer for cosine and sine respectively. But they don't give you tangents answer. So one way you could do it is you could, if you ever had to do a tangent and addition formula, and you had it set up like this, to find this answer right here, you know, when you're actually plugging those fractions that go in their respective spots, yeah, you could do this. You could take whatever the sine answer is, the sine answer is, and divide it by the cosine answer from your property sheet. But that's I know that's like a two-step process. You're putting a fraction over a fraction, and then you're doing like a reciprocal for this part. And then over here, same thing, you're taking a fraction over a fraction, and then doing a reciprocal and multiplying. And it's, that's ugly. I know it is. So that's why the tangent formula is one of those that it's really, it's, it's, it's tough for people to really wrap their head around. I would say the easiest strategy for doing tangent, like the easiest strategy for, if you had to use this formula um, for an angle, so let's say we're doing like tangent of 105, right? Let's say that that's what we're doing. So I know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to add angles together, right? I'm gonna add, um, 60 and 45, those are like common numbers that I that I know for my unit circle chart. Um, probably what I would do personally is I would just make the two triangles off to the side, the two special triangles, and then I would just use, I would just do the common sense thing. You know, like 45, 45, 90 triangle, that's a 1, 1, root 2. The 30, 60, 90 triangle is root 3, 1, and 2. And any time that I get to a certain spot, I would just look at the triangle and rattle off what that specific tangent is for that triangle. Okay? So let's plug these numbers in. So this is going to be my theta, this is going to be my beta on this particular problem. So if I plug these numbers in up there, here's what I have. I have tangent of 60 plus tangent of 45 all over 1 minus tangent 60 tangent 45. So does everyone see how I'm plugging the numbers there? Okay, now, to find these individual answers, like if I want to find the exact answer, which is the whole point of what we've been learning, the tangent of 60, you look at the triangle here, this is where the 60 degree triangle is, 30, 60, 90. What is the tangent of 60? Opposite over adjacent. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right. Right. So opposite over adjacent. This is the opposite wall of 60. This is the adjacent wall to 60. How I know the adjacent? It's not the hypotenuse wall, so it's always the smaller wall. So opposite over adjacent. So what's root 3 over 1? Root 3. So that's that top left corner. That's just a root 3. Okay. Tangent of 45. Doesn't matter which one you pick. Let's say we pick this one. Tangent. Opposite over adjacent. 1. Okay. So far, so good. Bottom, I have a 1 minus. Um, now, tangent 60. What was that? Yeah, because we already have the answer to so these. We already know them. It's root 3 times 1. And what I actually need the times 1? No. Yeah. So that's your answer. If you want to leave it like this, I am perfectly fine with you doing it. If you go to an upper level Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, they would never allow you to leave those radicals there. You would have to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. You have to multiply by 1 plus root 3 top and bottom. Well, all the radicals in the bottom. Gets left. I like it like that. Because it's, if this is a hard enough problem as it is, it's only going to go further right now. Make sense? Okay, last thing. We have to learn this, the, the difference formula. The difference formula is really easy. Here it is. Are we ever going to have to learn uh, cosine and secant? No. Okay. No. The tangent difference formula, this is the only, this is the only change. They just, the plus minus sign just switches top and bottom. That's all it is. So whatever the symbol is for tangent, so it's subtraction, that, that's going to be the symbol on the top. That's how I think of this. So if it's a subtraction, I'm doing tangent and subtraction, I know that's the symbol on the top of the fraction. Make sense? It's a very simple formula. Beautiful word. Yes. Okay. It's going to be due Wednesday. I think I think it's pretty good. Pretty tough. Right. Yeah. All right. Here's the homework. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this. Sorry. Connor, I'll answer your question. All right. Uh, homework here. I I have it written down. Okay. Right. Perfect. All right. So here's your homework. Page. It is the two Page. Page six oh four. Well, that's what's been confusing me. I'm like, 
14 through 20 even. 22, 24, and 26 through 32 even. Great. All right. The first couple, the first three or four, they're just signing cosines. 22, 24, those are tangents. And then you go to the bottom, now it's a free for all. I like how I'll mix them together. We got it. What? What am I catching? Nothing. Oh, it should be just 14 for 10. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I broke it up in first. Junior? Yeah. Dead Yeah, he's that's been on it for a year, you know.